Hi and welcome to this video, inspired by the Last of Us HBO series. Today we're going to do something special. We'll turn a traditional looking zombie in a random video into a clicker, all by means of VFX. We have this footage downloaded from the video stocks and what we'll do is replace the head of the zombie in the center of this shot with the head of a clicker. Here are some screenshots that we're going to use as a reference for the overall look of our zombie, but um, mainly it's color and texture. And we see that the color here goes from red to dark brown with some green tint. And the shape that the fungus takes on the infected person's head can be different too. So we're going to try and do something close to it. Alright, let's go! The first thing we need to do is obviously track the character's head in the footage. And as always, we're going to do that with the Geo Tracker. So we pick it from the effects and presets. And over here, we see that it's already analyzing the video, which is cool. Now we're going to need a 3D model to track the zombie's head. And the good news is that the latest update of Geo Tracker comes with the built in head primitive, which we'll use right now. This is a default head model with uh, kind of average dimensions uh, and size, so that would be too hard to try uh, to make it fit the guy's head to 100%. Uh, also because of his hairstyle here on top and his lower jaw, which is moving. And we don't actually need its upper and lower part for our tracking. So we're going to go here and deselect everything but the middle part, and that is ears, eyes, nose, and the upper face. You can start tracking from any frame, but we're going to use this one because here the guy's looking right into the camera and um, we can see his face in full. And we already have a new keyframe over here, which was created when we unticked the parts of the head model that uh, we won't be using in our tracking. So let's try to align the model right in this frame. There go eyes and his nose. I'm going to the Appearance tab to put the opacity of the wireframe down a little because I want to see um, the image a bit better. So I'm just creating and dragging pins to make our primitive fit the character's head. It makes sense to try to do it the best you can because uh, that's what the smoothness of your tracking depends on a lot. Okay, we need to wait till the analysis is complete. Alright, so GeoTracker has stopped analyzing the video. And let's track forward from this point by hitting the play button in the toolbar and see how it goes. That looks fine so far. Uh, we're going to check the curves in a short while, uh, but for now, let's track backwards. And here we see that the mesh goes off a little bit when the character bends over uh, almost to the bottom of the frame. So we just uh, stop it and uh, make some adjustments. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while to put the pins back where they should be. But in fact, this is the most important part of the whole process because the tracking results uh, that we get this way are in fact the actual movement of the uh, CG elements that we're going to add quite soon. And so the more smooth our tracking is here at this stage, the, the higher quality our scene is going to be in the end. If the tracking is rough, uh, in the composition we'll have shaky movement and uh, it just won't look realistic and that's not what we want. Okay, so we've made some adjustments, uh, so we need to hit the refine button to update the tracking data. Now let's check out what's going on in the curves. And I hit the U button to see all the keyframe properties. And there's this peak over here, which means something has gone wrong. This is because we didn't hit refine when we adjusted it for the first time. So let's update it now. Now I'm just checking position and uh, rotation parameters and it looks like everything is fine. Yeah, right. Our tracking is quite stable now. So let's export our tracking results. Uh, we go to export, object track and then hit export null. And now let's also create a camera layer. Uh, press command option, shift and C. And we're going to go with the standard settings. The focal length is uh, 50 millimeters. It's going to appear in the source list in the camera tab. Let's select it. And I believe it has the same settings as the default camera, right? Yeah, right. 
Well, uh, in fact, that's it for the tracking. Yeah, and it was pretty quick. So let's send it to Cinema 4D. So we go to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter, and boom. Here it says it, it has found some 2D layers and it's not going to export them. But that's okay, we only need our null and camera to be exported. We need a name for the C4D file, and I already have a, about a dozen of them in this folder. So this one is going to be our zombie number 10. Now we just go to the folder we saved it to and open that file. Here we are in Cinema 4D. Uh, it has created some sort of a camera already, but uh, we can delete it because we're going to use the camera from Geo Tracker. And there it is. We can take a look at its position and orientation in 3D space. It's a good idea to lock its coordinates because if we accidentally move it at some point, it's going to be hard to put it back. So let's go to Create Tag, uh, then Rigging Tags, and here we click on Protection. And as you see, now all the camera position coordinates are locked. We have a separate tutorial about integration between GeoTracker and Cinema 4D, so uh, you can go and watch it if you want to learn more about that. Now we're going to load our default head model right in here, because this way we'll see where the nose and the mouth are, and so we'll just um, put the head of our clicker on it, and it's just an easy way to position it in 3D space. Now let's go back to After Effects and export our head model. Uh, we go to the Export menu and then to Geometry. And it's a new feature that lets you export any 3D model that we have here right from GeoTracker. So let's go above and uh, tick Jaw, Mouth and Scalp and then click on Export to File and just save it to our folder. And I'm going to name it as, simply as Head and save it as an OBG file. Good, now let's go to Cinema 4D and load our head in here. Go to File, Merge Project, select it, and click Open. And uh, yeah, it's very big. So I'm going to change the scale value to 0.01 .01 for the X, and then uh, copy and paste it to Y and Z. And now it has the right size. Now we parent it to our null, and reset all position and rotation values to zero. If we press play now, we'll see that uh, it's recreating the movement of the character's head in 3D space, which I think is really mind-blowing, or so it looks. Now, right at this point, we can check if our tracking is really good. Uh, we need to have our footage here in the background, so we just find our video file and drag and drop it in here, press yes. Then we go ahead and create background and uh, drag our footage on it. We can see it now, but um, it's not gonna play. So we double click to open Material Editor and uh, down here in Viewport we select Animate Preview option and uh, now it's gonna play. Uh, but you see it's kind of blurry, so we also need to select No Scaling here in this uh, Texture Preview Size menu. Now it's all good and uh, yeah, let's tick this to jump to our camera position. Now let's just press play and uh, it's still calculating, but uh, we already see that the movement of our head model really matches the movement of the character head here. So that's good, and we need that background here only for this little test, so uh, we can turn it off anytime. Okay, that looks fine, and uh, we can go ahead and add our clicker here. Let's go to Merge Project again, and select our clicker model and press Open. These import settings are all fine, so just hit OK. Now we need to parent it to our object track. Uh, we can go and check what's inside that model, and uh, we see that it's got an adjacent part called Tooth, and we're not going to need it, so we can just delete it. Let's go back to our camera. The size of our model is correct, uh, so now we go to Transform, and reset all position and rotation here to zero. So uh, now both models are kind of in the same point in our 3D space. And we can go to background now and turn it off. Or you can leave it if you want to. And now we can easily adjust the clicker's position relevant to the character's head that we uh, captured and sort of imported in here using uh, this 3D head model. Okay, that has to be good and uh, we can make it a bit bigger. So let's have 1.1 uh, for all scale values here. Right, let's turn our background on just to see how that looks. 
I think we need to rotate it a bit like this. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we can go to our default head now and turn its visibility off. We don't need to see it anymore. And over here we have a little 3D on top of 2D layer kind of problem. I'm gonna zoom in to give a, a better view of it. So over here we have the back side of our clicker model that we see because we put this uh, 3D model right on top of our footage. So we want to hide it somehow and uh, we can do that if we go to our objects, right click on this 3D model and go to render tags and select display. And now down here in the tag properties, let's activate back face culling. Now let's apply material to our clicker model. Let's delete this material because uh, we won't be using it. Let's create a new material by pressing this uh, plus button and let's go inside here and select color and uh, load a texture. And it's going to be this uh, pre-made PNG file that you can find in the pack with all the other files for this project. Then we apply it to our model. We can play it now, enjoy the view. And there's one more thing we need to do here. We need our backface culling to work properly when our object is going to be rendered. Uh, so these are the things we need to fix inside our material. Uh, we activate alpha here and then go to texture, effects and select uh, normal direction. And now it's only those polygons we want to see that are going to be rendered. Now that we've applied material to our clicker model, we can light it to add some shadows and uh, so make it look more detailed and realistic. Let's first uh, remove the background. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need it anymore. Let's go over here and create sky. And we need to create a new material for our sky. Let's press this plus button again, double click and here in the editor we deselect color and reflectance and uh, select luminance, then go to texture and uh, load this HDR, uh, which was shot somewhere in the wild and um, it quite fits with the colors we find in our location. I mean, uh, the place where the video uh, with the zombies was shot. So this HDR is going to provide us with nice natural color tones when we add light sources and uh, that will help us match our CG element to our live footage. And uh, now we can apply it to our sky. But uh, to make it look even more natural, we need to have some sort of a ground that the light is going to be absorbed by. So let's go ahead and create floor, uh, then lower it down to minus 200, and then create a material for that floor and go to its color and uh, make it simply black. So now when we add our light, it's not going to bounce off uh, the bottom of our 3D scene and uh, these uh, lower parts of the clicker model looking down won't be lit and that will make them look more contrasted and uh, again natural. And now we go to render settings. Over here we click on effects and uh, select ambient occlusion. Let's hit this button one more time uh, and add uh, global illumination. Okay, now our light will bounce off all these elements we have in this environment and this will create nice shadows on our clicker model and uh, make it look really nice. So let's go over here again and create infinite light. And this is going to be uh, sort of our sun. So let's set its pivot rotation here to minus 90. And now if we render off this frame, we'll see both our HDR and the floor. And apparently we don't want them to be visible. So let's select floor, right click and go to render tags and select uh, compositing and then deselect scene by camera down here. Now let's do the same for our sky. So render tags, compositing, and now uh, they won't be seen by our camera. So if we render off this frame now, we'll only have our clicker uh, nicely lit and nothing else. Okay, uh, now we want to put this clicker head into our After Effects project. So we need to render it now, but we want to make sure everything is rendered properly. So let's go to this sky object tag and uh, deselect scene by transparency over here. This is needed again for our uh, back face culling to be rendered correctly. Then we need to make sure we're looking at our scene right through our camera and not from any other angle. 
and uh, now go to render settings save and uh, select the format and we want it to be uh, PNG because we need alpha in it so let's select this alpha channel option then select name type here we basically choose that it's going to be name followed by frame number and we also want the depth to be a 16-bit channel and then we select the folder uh, we want to save it to I'm going to name it as clicker and save it to a new folder name it simply as render and then just press save and go ahead and uh, set it to render by hitting this render the picture viewer button and now we need to wait for our render results and then go to After Effects. Okay, the render is complete. Uh, here we just grab our render folder and uh, drop it in here right on our timeline. If we play it now, we see it's uh, all good, uh, but not quite. There's a problem over here. In these frames, the character's hair becomes visible uh, right behind our clicker model. Uh, and we're going to need a clean plate to remove it. We've prepared a clean plate beforehand just to save time. So let's just drag it in here right above the footage. And um, here we go. No more hair. Good. Now let's try to do something to match our CG element into our live action shot. The first thing we can do is uh, add some blur to the clicker because it looks too sharp compared to all other objects in this shot. So let's select camera lens blur from the effects and presets and apply it to our uh, sequence. Let's go to blur radius. Uh, five would be too much. So let's make it say uh, 1.2. We can click on this FX here to see the difference uh, this effect has made. And then let's go and find brightness and contrast. Drag it in here and uh, we're gonna do some color grading now. So we're going to set the contrast to maximum because we see that uh, this is a pretty contrasted shot. But uh, that makes our clicker too bright. So let's find hue and uh, saturation. Add it here and go down with uh, master saturation to minus uh, 47. And we can tweak this master hue to somewhere like uh, plus 8. All right, we're gonna create a vignette effect now just for a better look. And let's add an adjustment layer. Uh, pick this uh, ellipse tool and draw this kind of uh, oval shape. Then switch this mode from add to subtract. Now let's go find and apply curves uh, to our adjustment layer and uh, pull this master curve down a bit. And we want to insert a sort of a gradient here. So let's go to adjustment layer, click on mask one, then hit F to see mask feather and um, uh, set it to 200. This will soften the edges and uh, we can pull this master curve even further down like this and maybe also crank uh, master feather up to 270. Let's bypass this layer to see uh, how our vignette works. Looks nice and uh, yeah, let's name this layer as vignette. Now we need to add motion blur to our clicker model because if we scroll forward to this frame we see that the guy's arm and uh, shoulder are all blurry and our clicker isn't. So let's go to effects and presets one more time, select pixel motion blur and apply it to our clicker. And we need to move it right on top here. We can uh, increase the number of shutter samples to say um, 20 and uh, now let's just wait till the calculation is over. Okay we're going to stop at this point. Uh, this is our scene. I think it looks quite convincing and uh, it's a good example of how we can add CG elements to a live action scene in After Effects. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more tutorials of this sort and see you in the next videos.